2020, America was on fire. From Milwaukee to Miami, Los Angeles to Louisville, the fires of racial unrest burned furiously, exploding with the police killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis. It was a live execution, and the police did that because they wanted to tell us, we wear this uniform, this is what we can do to you, black people. Man, I can't breathe my face. The bystander's cell phone video begins with police restraining a man on a Minneapolis street Monday night. Later dying after a white officer kneeled on his neck, the man heard saying, I can't breathe. When I watched that officer taking the life of George Floyd with his hands in his pockets, looking out in that way, it was apparent to me that he did not think anything would happen to him. In the seven minutes and 46 seconds, that it took for Floyd to take his last breath, a movement was born and grew into the largest protest for racial justice the U.S. and perhaps the world had ever seen. George Floyd's story has been the story of black folks because ever since 401 years ago, the reason we could never be who we wanted and dreamed to be in is you kept your knee on our neck. Soon after Floyd's death on Memorial Day, cities across the country began debating policy changes and limits to police power. There's a new call for deep structural reform of policing across the country. Many are now demanding departments be defunded, dismantled, or outright abolished. The names of other black people killed by police or white vigilantes added fuel to the fire. Drawing international attention, Ahmaud Arbery, who's African-American. You can still see some of the bullet holes on the front of Breonna Taylor's apartment. Her family and their lawyers told me if anyone else had barged into her apartment and shot and killed her, they would have been charged. Videos showing Rayshard Brooks's deadly encounter with police are sparking a lot of discussion tonight about officer protocols. Protesters amplified calls for justice Monday, this time in Kenosha, less than 24 hours after police shot Jacob Blake in the back, causing serious injuries. Two days later, a white 17-year-old, Kyle Rittenhouse of nearby Illinois, shot three protesters, killing two of them. Rittenhouse walked by police, hands up without being arrested. They let him literally go home. There are two justice systems in America, and that's why people are protesting. He claimed self-defense and was later charged with felony homicide and other charges, including reckless endangerment and illegal underage gun possession. The racial unrest of 2020 reshaped how we saw American policing, our politics, and even ourselves. Did we ultimately get the kind of policy change that you think um, can effectuate some real movement in terms of social and racial justice? No, we actually haven't got the policy change that's going to be a force multiplier yet. The year 2020 also marked a transition with the passing of civil rights icons, Congressman John Lewis and the Reverend C.T. Vivian. Both men dedicated their lives to justice and both died on July 17th during the height of the protest. When we do form a more perfect union, whether it's years from now or decades or even if it takes another two centuries, John Lewis will be a founding father of that fuller, fairer, better America. The push for equality kept expanding. It crossed racial and class lines and elevated the voices of women and members of the LGBTQ community as Americans from all walks of life demanded change. USA, USA, USA. But the movement for black life also spurred a counter reaction with a wink and a nod from President Trump. Stand back and stand by. That exchange immediately picked up by the Proud Boys. One Proud Boys organizer saying that the president basically said to go F them up. The racial justice movement also collided with the COVID-19 pandemic 
and the 2020 campaigns for president as the virus's disproportionate killing of black people exposed structural and systemic racism. Do you believe that the epidemic of racism is more threatening than the pandemic of yes, COVID? Of course. Yes, we've had the, we have the pandemic and it's killing thousands of Americans. But our, our country was founded on slavery. It was founded on killing, killing black men, innocent black men. Racial inequality and the rise of hate in America were key voting issues. The African-American community stood up again for me. You always had my back, and I'll have yours. Black, Black lives, lives matter. matter. Hollywood and America's multi-billion dollar professional sports leagues were forced to confront racism too. We, the National Football League, admit we were wrong for not listening to NFL players earlier and encourage all to speak out and peacefully protest. NASCAR took down Confederate flags. Baseball and soccer players stood in solidarity with its black players. The women of the WNBA helped lead the way. NBA players forced the cancellation of games to protest the ongoing killings of black people by police. And the league joined them, adding Black Lives Matter to NBA hardwood and allowing players to add pro-justice and pro-black slogans to their game jerseys. I think collectively, athletes felt much more empowered. The whole mask came off in this country. You can't unsee what you've seen. The fires of 2020 burned hot. But the question remains, will we still feel the heat in 2021 and beyond? Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.